So any and just dropped a brand new update where you can use Appify as nodes or a trigger within your workflows. And what I'm gonna do for you guys today is show you how I converted a workflow uh, where I had two different Appify actors into it and use the brand new nodes associated with them. It can be a little bit tricky at first, but it's honestly pretty easy once you get a hang of it. Uh, this replaces the old HTTP requests and then grabbing specific API endpoints. And it's much simpler this way, although uh, you do go from you're only using one node with an HTTP request to two different nodes, um, which I'll be showing you guys how to use in this video. And real quick, before I share my screen and show you guys these brand new updates and how to use uh, these nodes, I want to let you know that I am taking on customers for any end workflows or any type of data needs. I'm gonna have a link down below in the description if you wanna reach out on that side of things. Anyways, let's jump into these brand new Appify updates. All right, so this is the page that I was directed to, integrate Appify with 1000 plus apps and services, and you can get this built now directly in NAN because it's been verified uh, and you don't have to use the HTTP request anymore, which is really nice. So let me show you a few things. Number one, and just in case you need to update your uh, version of NAN, right? Go to app.nan.cloud slash manage and make sure your NAN version is the latest beta that I have over here, like 1.108.1. That is where uh, Appify is built into. It might be a little bit earlier version, but that's at least what I'm doing here on this side of things. Okay, so let me show you this. Uh, this was actually gonna be today's video. And this was an integration that I built where I'm scraping Instagram profiles that use a specific hashtag, right? And I just did a basic 20 and this was used with two different Appify actors. So let me show you what these actors look like. So first what I have is an initial scraper on this side of things. So I looked up the Instagram hashtag scraper, which was created by Appify, right? $2.30 for a thousand results. And then I got a scraper for Instagram profiles, right? $1.60 for a thousand results. So uh, both these are maintained by Appify, I want to say. Yeah, maintained by Appify for both of these. I'm going to use it in my workflow, right? I would get the hashtags and then I would get the profiles associated with it. So what I want to show you guys today is like, first, how I would change this up. So let's say you have some old workflows and you want to just put in Appify on the side of things, how you could do that. Uh, as well as just going through it. So I think that's probably the best approach on that side of things. So in the past, right, when you wanna make a post request, all you would wanna do on the side of things is click post, right? You would paste in the URL, which if you wanna get the URL, you'd go over here to API, you'd go to API endpoints, and then I would use this one over here, run actor synchronously and get the data set items, right? So I would paste that in over here, except for my token, which I would use a generic credential type, query authentication, and then I would essentially just put my token in here. So name token value. I need to rename this. I've talked about it a few times. This was my first Appify video here on the channel, but uh, yeah, so we have that over here. And then you would just say send query parameters on this side of things, right? And uh, yeah, so actually I, we don't need the query parameters, but we'd use that over here. And then I would send in my JSON specifically uh, based around the input. So if I'd go to these actors, right? If you go over here and look at input for JSON, right? This would give you the example JSON. So all I do is fill this out with information. And these are the hashtags that I wanted to paste in, right? JSON hashtag. And I get that a little bit earlier from a form submission that I have over here, right? And so I'm gonna submit a form, place in a hashtag, and then that hashtag gets sent to this request. So we'll walk through that. And uh, yeah, um, I'm still gonna make a separate video on this full walkthrough. This will be out on Friday. Uh, so if you're watching this in the future, it's already out on the channel. If you're watching this today, I appreciate you being early. But yeah, so let's uh, first take a look at this. And what I'm gonna do I'll go over here is say Appify. And you'll see Appify shows up. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is install this node to start using it. So what I'm gonna do is click install node. And by the way, this is my first time taking a look at it. Um, and take a look, you're installing new package. Um, okay, interesting. So let's see what's going on there. All right, so I literally just refreshed my instance after that error and package installed. In fact, I was trying to dive into it even with perplexity to see if anyone is having those results. I searched Google, 
there was nothing on there. So I just refreshed and it worked. So maybe if that happens to you, it was just like a bug. Um, but yeah, so now this is installed over here and you can see there's actor actions like run an actor, scrape single URL, get last run, run task. So what we're going to do is just try to figure this out. And it's interesting. There's even a trigger on new Appify events. So this is pretty cool. Um, so like if you're, I would assume the trigger of you're running this manually over here, like start, you can build it out. Uh, where if you run it over here, uh, you can turn this into a workflow over here. Maybe I'll, I'll build out a full video covering everything with Appify, but I just wanted to show you this first. So this is actually my second time re-recording this. Um, I figured out how to get this to work and I just wasn't happy with the first version. So I'm going to show you guys essentially how to do it over here. So essentially what we have on this workflow is two HTTP requests for two different actors that I use. And the first one on here, it just scrapes posts based off of Instagram hashtags. The second one over here essentially goes and grabs profiles based around um, profile information I got from the hashtags. So what we're gonna do is use these two scrapers and I'm gonna show you how to use those specifically with the new Appify uh, nodes. So first I'm gonna disconnect this one over here and what we're gonna do is click the plus icon and we're actually gonna need two things from Appify. So the first thing we need to do is we need to run an actor. So we're gonna say run an actor on that. So we'll have this over here. And I actually, this populated there. And the second thing, after running an actor, you're gonna have to get a data set. So go to Appify again, and then we're gonna go click over here and say, um, get data set items. Okay, so let me explain how to set up this run an actor first. What I'm gonna do is just drag this in over here. I just have a basic form that gets hashtags, right? So I just put in one, for example, non-sports cards. So we're gonna scrape that hashtag for post. And what we're gonna do is fill this out. now. A few things on the side of things, right? So first you're gonna have to log in with your Appify API key. So how you do this, I just click this edit icon over here. You go into the connection, which I don't know why it's not showing. Um, and you have to grab your API key. Now where you can get that is if you go over here to your settings, then you go to API integrations and just copy this API key, right? So this is the API token created on signup. So just copy that in and go back over here, paste, and then you should have this showing as success, right? So super, super easy to do. You don't have to deal tokens anymore, um, which can kind of confuse some people. Okay, so next we're gonna keep the app operation as, re as run an actor, we're gonna keep resources actor. And there's two different ways you can find actor source, right? Recently use actors, or you can go over here and grab a URL. So if you do recently use actors, it'll give you a list and you guys can see some of the ones that I've recently used. A lot of these are on YouTube videos and whatnot. Um, and this is if you run it in NAN or if you run it in Appify, right? So what I'm gonna actually do is buy URL because I think this is probably the most common use case. And one thing you have to do, so for example, I'm grabbing this Instagram hashtag scraper. Make sure you're in your console. Your URL should have slash actors slash and be like a, a longer string. So grab that on that side of things. If you're not in your console, you're gonna get the wrong URL and it's not gonna work. Um, one of those weird quirks I learned really early on. Uh, doing that this morning. So I'm gonna paste this in on here. Okay, next you're gonna see this that uh, says input JSON. Now to get that, what we're gonna wanna do is go to this input tab on here, and we're gonna go instead of manual, go over here to JSON. And what I recommend is you just copy this directly, right, and then you paste this in. Now, I actually made some modifications because what I wanna do is uh, use this hashtag, right? I don't wanna use the default web scraping. So this was just input from a form. So if you've used NAN quite a bit, right, you know that you can just drag and drop. And just to show you from my initial HTTP request, right, what I have over here, um, and I'll go back and forth, is I use this JSON hashtag, right? So if we go back over here, that's my JSON hashtag. So I'm just gonna paste this where web scraping is. I'm gonna change this over here to expression, right? And then just drag and drop this over here. So this makes it more dynamic, right, which is awesome. So now this will run the actor based off of this JSON hashtag. And let me execute this step just to show you guys. And right, initially when I was learning this for the first time this morning, I was hoping that, uh, you know, it'd give me the results, but it just says, hey, this ran, you know, it, it succeeded, awesome, we got the scraping, uh, you need to now do the work to get the data set. So uh, let me go over here to the data set. And this is my one complaint so far through the Appify actor, right? I do think this is easier um, with, without the tokens, and I should say instead of Appify Actor, but um, 
Appify and NAN. I think it's much easier, but my first time using this, it got a little confusing because I'm trying to find this data set, right? And I would expect it to be at the very top because it's something that you would want to grab. You actually got to dive in here a little bit and find the data set ID. And um, where is that at? It's like, it's default. Um, here you go. Default data set ID. And you can see it's like hidden. Um, there's a lot of JSON over here. It's hidden all the way here at the bottom. I really wish they put this here at the very top um, just for easy use, right? So just drag this default data set ID into this data set ID over here. Uh, limit. Personally, I would prefer that you guys do use a limit over here because you can see in this example, you have result limit 20. Um, so I think it's much better to put that in your initial JSON for the input because you're getting charged on that. Um, so limit there instead of over here. But regardless, uh, keep everything else the same, get items, data set. You already get logged into Appify. So click execute steps and you'll see we have this all over here, right? This is the results that I wanted. And if just to show you guys as well, like for the old HTTP request, right? So what we used to do is use a post. We have to go over here to API, API endpoints. And then I use this over here, run actor, right? Or I would have to use two different ones, which I've used in some of the older videos. But I mean, the method I just showed you right there is probably the best approach. You would have to use a generic credential, right? You'd have to do a query authentication. Uh, set up a token in here, right? And I've covered this in other videos, right? You have your token, your token value, and then pass in the JSON over here. So now this is broken up into you run the actor, right? And they get the data set ID and just pass this in. So let me just show you one more example of this really fast. So what we have over here a little bit later on in the code is I want to get the profile information from the posts that I grabbed over here, right? From the hashtag. So I'm just going to disconnect this and we'll walk through it over here. So this is the scraper I want to use, Instagram Profile Scraper. I'm going to have a full walkthrough of this uh, workflow on Friday. But I'm going to click over here to plus, and then I'm going to go over here and search Appify. Unfortunately, like you can't just type in like a data set, right? Nothing shows up on Appify. So you're going to have to use Appify each time. So Appify, um, and what I'm going to say over here is run an actor, and then uh, wherever that hid, oh, there it is right there. Um, I let's remove you there. Okay. And then we're going to do Appify again and get data set. Right. So just remember run an actor, get a data set. Okay. So we have both of these over here. What we're going to do now is get that, uh, actor. And again, make sure you grab this actor URL. It should have slash actors in it. If you go back over here, right, you say appify.com slash appify Instagram profile scraper, it doesn't have actors. So make sure your URL is actors, right? So we're getting the profile scraper over here. Um, what I'm doing is just gonna paste that in over here. So I just go to the URL, paste that in. Again, you could also use ID or stuff like that. I just find URL the easiest. Next, what you wanna do is go over here to input, go to JSON, copy what this looks like, right? Go back here in NAN, start with this, right? I am gonna change this out because I already have my expression that I wanna use, right? Because I actually wanna pass in a list um, that I dynamically get. So I'm just gonna grab this over here. And I know that works because uh, I built this and it worked awesome. Uh, let me just go back over here and we'll just paste that in on that side of things, right? Again, making it dynamic. And then what we're gonna do is just execute the work flow through here just to make sure that this is working, right? No other changes that I want. I wanna wait to finish so that way it works properly. I'm just gonna click execute workflow. Should be successful. And this one does take a little bit, like maybe 20 or 30 seconds. So I might just stop it and fast forward here in the video. All right, and you can see it's run now. And again, no data set information. So what we're gonna have to do is drag that data set ID again. Look for that. Again, it's kind of hidden over here. I feel like I'll get used to it a little bit later on, but it's still a little odd that it's so, so far down. But grab the data set ID. Again, limit it if you want. I find it kind of pointless to put that limit over there. Um, limit it so you don't have your API costs, right? Um, wait for this to run. It'll really wait for it to execute. Again, might take 
a little bit because there's a lot of information over here. And then you can see this populated over here. So uh, this works on that side of things. I'm just going to, I should have probably pinned that just so I don't have costs associated with it. But uh, yeah, and then I would just want to connect this back up to everything over here. And again, watch the video Friday if you want to see how this works. The video is specifically on Appify. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to run an actor, right? Remember, grab the actor. It should have slash actors in the URL. Paste that over here. Or you can just grab your latest runs if you want to run it uh, natively here, right? You can just click start and it would run on that side of things. I'm not going to do it for cost, but um, that would make it go towards the top of your list, right? Because it would be one of the last runs. I would recommend URL. And again, I, if you grab that unique key here at the top, that would be the actor. And that would be that by ID. Again, I just prefer URL. Use the example input JSON they give you on Appify and start modifying it. Again, just drag and drop JSON uh, from your NAN workflow if you want to use that specifically. And then just grab your data set items. Remember, use the data default data set. I did want to talk about some of the other stuff that I did see under Appify, which can be a little bit interesting. So scrape a single URL. Um, haven't done that yet, but you can see over here what it talks about. And uh, let me go back on that side of things. So, and maybe I'll make this into a video in itself. So this is just for web scraping on this side of things. So I wonder if this is going to be like very similar to Firecrawl. And you can see on here, it talks about it. Again, if you guys find this interesting, I might make that into a video on the channel. Um, also, I saw that you can actually do a trigger from Appify, which I find interesting. So you go over a trigger on a new Appify event. So maybe you like, you don't want to run in here and you just run it directly in Appify, right? And you can set this as a, trigger and you can also get past runs and stuff like that or user run list um, but i think what i showed you guys here today is probably the most common way to use actors and appify and nan now in cloud right so run an actor get the data set items and again if you watch this whole workflow essentially how i was able to get hashtags and then turn it into uh, accounts and get information behind the accounts that it's going to be on Friday. Also, I am taking on any end customers. So if you have any interest on that, hit up the URL down below in the description. And yeah, so thank you guys for checking out this video. If you found it helpful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys in another video.